Welcome, Mudbugs fans. Welcome to the edition of our Shreveport Mudbugs Media Luncheon. Mudbugs coming off a split in their first two games of the opening round series against their arch rival, the Lone Star Baramas, uh, dropping game one in the four overtime uh, contest by a final score of two to one. Of course, that was the longest game uh, in Mudbugs franchise history, so 126 minutes and 42 seconds. And then uh, in game two, the Mudbugs were able to come away with the win. Jaden Goldie had the game winner in overtime. Uh, to win the game 2-1. to one. They won that in uh, the first overtime, so Mudbugs now 1-1 one, one split. Game 3 this Friday and then Game 4 on Saturday. Both, um, both nights start at 7-11. First 800 fans in the building on Friday will get a rally towel, so be sure to come out early to George's Pond on Friday and get those tickets. Um, <clears throat> to get your tickets this week, give us a call at 318-636-7094 or by logging on to mudbugshockey.com. Here to talk about last weekend series. Uh, against Lone Star and of course this weekend's upcoming games against Lone Star is Mudbugs head coach Jason Soupy Camp. <laughs> I, don't know who, I don't know who that guy was that introduced me, but oh, it's Chet. He's got hair on his lip. <laughs> Well, you kind of, uh, especially after Saturday, you know, it's all pretty positive. You know, you're flying high. and um, But then this morning, you know, we got into some more, a lot more of the stuff that we need to, need to get better at and still show some of the stuff that we were good at. But um, it's a bit of everything. But uh, this morning was more, more focused on some of the details we need to clean up in order to play a more efficient game. What did you just, sorry, just to piggyback on that, where would power play? Uh, it's up there, you know. It is. It's up there. But uh, but again, power plays up there. The the you know trying to generate more more scoring opportunities is up there. You know, trying to limit the amount of opportunities is up there. But we did have some good opportunities on the power play, or like we were given chances to 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 maybe go up a goal or two in certain situations, and and we just didn't capitalize. You know, the execution wasn't there. So. So it's just part of uh, the game plan, something else that we need to work on. And, and even when you look at our PK, they, they didn't get scored against. But, but at the same time, you know, they possessed the puck pretty well a, a few times, and we got to try to limit those opportunities. Crap, they had us in our zone one time for almost two minutes. Um, so we got to be able to end those plays. And so again, there's, we haven't touched on the PK yet, but we will for sure moving forward this week. I know there's no such thing as a hockey coaching school, but if there was, how would they tell a guy how to handle 17 to 21 year olds who lose a four overtime game? So how did you handle that? What was the message? Uh, guys pretty much had it handled. You know, it was just we had our chances. They had theirs. Goaltenders were playing awesome. It was just really a, it's really a pretty good hockey game all around. You know, just a little bit of back and forth. And uh, when you look at it, we had seven periods of hockey and like 45 shots each, close to that anyway. So. You know, the, both teams were playing pretty sound hockey, and uh, it's just, hey, man, we gotta, we gotta hurry up and get out of here and get rested up. We gotta play in less than 24 hours, you know. So, uh, really, less than what I don't know how many hours it was, but it was pretty quick turnaround at that point. So it was all about rest, refuel, rehydrate, and and the best way to go about your your next day to prepare to play, and and that's all it was. So, but the guys immediately after were like, hey, coach, we're we're in a good spot right now, you know. We're in a good spot. We're we're gonna keep working. We're gonna we're gonna try to turn this around, you know. So, so mentally they were in a good spot. Coach, I played with uh, Lone Star for a regular season. Just playing with Lone Star essentially the postseason. What do you learn as a coach about Lone Star each and every time you face them? It's just gonna be an outright battle all the time, you know. It doesn't matter if the, if their guys are skilled or you know they have a healthy mix of players, but it doesn't matter what they are. They're gonna work hard and. Uh, and their goaltending's always been strong. They're they're very systematically sound. So it is going to take a lot of detailed hockey, a lot of um, hard hard work, you know, to to be able to to find those holes and take advantage of any opportunities that you may get if they, if they break down somewhere, you know. So and systematically sound too in their PK and their power play. So it's just not five on five hockey where they're where they're they're solid. It's their entire game and. And the players that they have there 
are bought in. They're playing a good team hockey game, and they wouldn't make the playoffs if they if they weren't that way. And same with us, though. You know, so we're just trying to counter that with the the best hockey that that we have that we're that we've been working on all year. Yeah, we played that many minutes um, over the weekend. I mean, it was more than basically an extra game. Uh, does anything change this week to maybe back off a little bit, let the kids re recover a little more? Well, we, we gave the guys yesterday off too. So uh, we did have some ice available for some guys, but, but most guys just stayed away again. And um, while we prepared for them this morning as a, as a coaching staff, we were here getting ready, doing things and preparing for our video this morning and practice. And, but, but for the guys, they, they needed to just stay away. And really, uh, I liked our practice this morning, guys. We're buzzing and they were they're ready to go. The main concern was the proper rest and, and really like you want them to rest but they can't sleep too long because now you're not rehydrating as you're sleeping or, or anything like that. So um, you know, we bought extra food and had it had it waiting for us at the hotel, what was left of it anyways by the time we got there. Um, so that that that's the main concern, rest, refuel, rehydrate and and just get the bodies as ready bodies of mind ready to go as much as possible. We did do a little bit of video before we before we left for the game. So, you know, again, touching on some of the things we thought we needed to fix going into Saturday. You got a wrench thrown in the plans there when you got back. Obviously, probably a lot of fans don't know, but take us through behind the scenes when you get back to the hotel. And probably the one thing the guys wanted to do after playing for that long is eat and drink and rehydrate like you did. And half the food wasn't there. What happens in that or what happened in that instance and how did you recover from it? Well, each team on the road, <clears throat> excuse me, for one thing, when we're on the road, they have food available to us at the rink, you know, um, but we wanted to have extras, uh, extra food. So we, we put it in order for some more pasta and uh, a few pizzas and stuff like that. So, but when we got there, I guess, you know, we were late getting back, obviously, because of overtime, but we, we tried to take the precautions to make sure that it was taken care of and it'd be there when we got there and we showed up and... Um, you know, maybe half of it or so is eaten by some, I guess, hotel guests and, and whatnot. So, but again, it's just one of those things that happens, right? It, they happen. Now it's okay. And some guys had already pre-ordered. These guys always order stuff and have Uber Eats coming or something like that. So, but we, everybody found a way to fill their bellies and, and we were fine. It's just nothing you can do about it. You can't cry over it. Did you think at the end of regulation Saturday, holy crap, here we go? <laughs> Not really, <laughs> you know, it's just seems to be the norm in that building right now, you know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens this weekend, uh, uh, but again, it, it's happening again. It's just it's just the way it is, and it's another period of hockey. Let's, let's go and try to finish the job this time because it really sucks to be on the losing end of those games, you know, and uh, you don't, nobody wants to have that feeling. So uh, we were fortunate enough to turn things around Saturday night. It was a, it's a huge win for us. Coach, with a lone star finish at one point above y'all during the regular season, is there, do you hope the juice is more flowing because you face lone star again each and every time? Yeah, so yes, there's always, you know, that high competition, high energy because you're, you're playing Lone Star, but the, the games are just usually so intense and so energetic, you know, that they're, they're chippy, and, but there's also skill and speed and hitting, and, you know, it, it, it's really been good hockey so far. So playing them, yes, but, but really, honestly, it's felt like that all year, and even last year, just the South Division in general, there's a lot of good rivalries and good, it, it's just hard every night, and uh, it almost seems like you're making a new rivalry every night, and um, I think it just prepares any team that makes the playoffs. Did you guys uh, identify the issue with the changes, especially in overtime, and then especially with a goaltender who likes to play the puck, was that something that was addressed already? I'll let you ask uh, Nico and Goldie if we address the line changes during overtime. But uh, from my standpoint, yeah, we we did. <laughs> but, uh, and Hilly's standpoint, yeah, we did. But uh, you know, the, there's uh, there were some glaring issues in in some of those overtime situations that we definitely needed to brought it up on the bench and definitely brought it up this morning. Every game. 
job done in your fashion, not against the wall in the series this year? It, it's, it's, uh, it's a huge night. But, you know, if, if we win Friday night, that's great. Now Saturday night's huge, you know, because you don't want to go back there. You want to try to finish them off while their backs are against the wall. But, but if things don't go our way Friday night, then Saturday night's still huge, obviously, because we're, we're playing for our lives, you know, and we want to go back there at that point. So um, it's every, you just want to win every game. You just want to end it while you can end it if you have the opportunity. So every game is just, it's huge. Like it would have been great to win game one there. You know, it would have been awesome. But then it just makes game two. Oh, man, boys, we win this one. We have to win one out of two at home, you know. But if we lose that one, now we're like, oh, geez, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to sweep the weekend at home, you know. And they're, they're just not an easy team to sweep. So um, it, every night's important. So Friday night is the most important night right now. Then once Friday's done, Saturday night will be the most important night. How much does this team remind you of the Rockets and Stuff team won a couple years ago? Uh, reminds me a lot of them in, a, in certain ways, you know, obviously the players are different, but, but really the personnel, you know, we have good goaltending. We like our decor. We've got, feel like we've got good four lines that we can go to and, um, our, our overall game is pretty sound and, you know, they're, they seem to be mentally tough and pretty resilient group. So, um, there's a lot of, a lot of resemblances with those teams, you know, um, and I think you have to have that. Number one, just to make the playoffs. But if you can keep keep improving in all those areas of the game, and personally, mentally, and physically, then then you could ultimately turn into a championship team. The longer you can keep this going, does Shush become a possibility coming back, or, or is that how? <clears throat> no, it, to me, it's always a possibility. You know, he uh, he was with us on the road. He's walking around in a boot. You know, so that's uh, that's pretty big steps. You know, so again, the, it, when. It, if and when that, that ever happens, you know, it'd be down the road, obviously, and, and then conditioning becomes a huge part, and just being out of the lineup for so long, you got to make sure that, that he's prepared and the team's prepared. It just, you know, a lot has been, a lot has been going on since he's been out, so, uh, but never say never. He's a, he's a pretty good player, and, um, you know, he's been dearly missed, but at the same time, our guys have stepped up and done a great job without him. Do you have anything from your personal experience playing in anywhere close to the four overtime situation? Uh, playing? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, had a couple overtime games playing, some lacrosse games, that, some big time games that went into overtime and stuff like that, but um, nothing like a quadruple overtime. You know, that was, that was pretty wild. Uh, from, and that's just coaching, you know, and then obviously coaching the triple overtime a couple years ago that – those two games have been, they were pretty long and was, they're pretty amazing to be a part of. I know you were obviously on the team. Were you on the ice when Sprotter went coast to coast and triple overtime? Uh, no, no. I think I remember just watching him. I'm picturing him right now kind of sauntering up the ice, <laughs> and just smoothly sauntering <laughs> in and out. <laughs> Uh, they'll be big time, you know, that's, uh, they always are, you know, they're always rowdy, they're always loud, and especially when we score, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be huge. They're, our boys, uh, that's always been an attraction for people to play here, really even the visiting teams for that matter, you know, they like coming and playing in front of a big crowd too, but, uh, but for us, it's, uh, it's a big crowd that's behind us, and, uh, and uh, that's, a, that's a big advantage in my opinion. And I think the guys will say the same. How much does success in a particular postseason lead to maybe a pace or two you didn't expect to show up in main camp, or all of a sudden say, "Hey, Super, you need a, you need somebody next year that, that maybe you wouldn't have thought of"? Does is there a direct correlation with maybe you know winning this year and, and the recruiting paying off the next season? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I I think you know you. You see some successes that guys or the team may be having, you know, in certain situations, and then you may say, "Oh man, look what we're lacking here." Maybe you know, and 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 then maybe that's a that's a somebody you you search for. You may be searching for qualities that you you see are working, but but you may see something that's lacking, and and try to actively go out and find somebody to fill that void. So, hundred percent. Any more questions for Coach? Thank you, Chet Yoder.
I want to remind our fans, uh, we do have group rates, uh, so 10 or more, please come on out. The games three and four, Friday and Saturday at George's Pond. If the series does go to a fifth game, it'll be Monday night, 7 p.m., back at the Night Tech Sports Center. Uh, moving on to our player portion today's Mud Bucks Media Luncheon. He was tremendous in net. He made 26 saves uh, to help keep the team in the game and then, of course, help them win the game and help even the series with the Mud Bucks and uh, the Barama's uh, opening round series. Uh, young Mud Bucks net miner, Nikolai Goich. Question for Nikolai. Uh, Supi said there was obviously a good chance you might have played Saturday anyway, despite what happened Friday. But did you get the feeling as the game was one overtime, two overtime, three overtime, that it was going to be your opportunity on Saturday night? Once it got to the end, once the second overtime ended, I kind of had the idea that uh, I was going to play the next day because Bushy played almost. Two, he played two games in one day, so I thought he would need a rest. So I kind of had the idea I'd play Saturday. How cool was that? Thing? It was cool. It was actually my first playoff playoff game in this league. So it was a great experience, and I, I love those games, the tight neck-to-neck -neck games, overtimes. I just think those are the, the best games to play in. Did you learn anything watching the four-overtime game that helped you in your game on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, playing Saturday and watching the game Friday, you kind of take notes of the game Friday. And you kind of see like their systems and where each certain player likes to move the puck and where they like to shoot it. So yeah, it definitely helped me out a good bit. You're in the top five in terms of goalies out of all goalies in the postseason. Mm -hmm. um, what makes you just keep going each and every game, especially in a four overtime game? Honestly, for playoffs, I I just think about uh, the guys that uh, like their last year because I don't want their season to be over. I don't want their junior um, experience sound like that. So they're probably my top priority is just. Just uh, keep them in, in the series longer. Soupy's uh, a guy that clearly wanted to get the line changes thing cleared up. And I imagine you didn't like seeing two and three guys on, on one or none coming your way very often in the overtime. Mm -hmm. But take me through it. When you, when you see them on an odd man rush or a clear breakaway in overtime, I mean, what goes through your head? The only thing going through my head is stop the puck. I don't have any other thing going through my head. I don't even think about what if they score. It's just stop the puck and... That's that's just the main goal. And then once you made the first big breakaway save, I mean, that, I imagine the next time they come, are you a little calmer? Does that give you a little more confidence? Oh yeah. Did it help you the next time? Each save in overtime gives you more confidence. Even at the start of the game, like the first, as soon as the puck drops, first puck drop, first thing is make the first save, and then make the next one. And as the saves go on, your confidence gets gets bigger and bigger. So yeah, definitely all the all How that. did you celebrate Saturday night? Saturday night. Well, when I saw. It, Goldie score. It was a minute left in the first overtime, and the thing was going through my head was I don't really, I don't want to go to a second overtime. So when he scored the uh, the first when he scored the game winning goal, I was just standing in my crease with my hands up and I was just kind of in shock. And then I just went went down and celebrated with the boys. Did you get that move from Chet doing claws up? Is that what you were? Kind of <laughs> uh, my first reaction was just put the hands up. I'm just I'm just happy. I'm in a good mood. So. Yeah. I asked Coach a second ago, you know, well, with y'all finishing a point behind Lone Star in the regular season standings, is there a little more irritation with, you know, facing these guys in the postseason? I think it's, I think them finishing above us gives us more of a challenge. It makes us want to beat them even more just because they finished ahead of us. What's the best part of this team right now? I think our team chemistry is great. I think all the boys get along. There's not like, a, like groups of people. I think we're all just really close together, and I think it helps us out a, a lot. Something that you can see developing through the season. I mean, when you when you look back, is it clear? I mean, it just makes sense. You guys spend time around each other. You're going to get closer. Mm -hmm. But I mean, is it tangible? Oh, 100 percent. You could tell. Like, I got here a little later than everyone. I wasn't here for training camp. But when I got here, I could already tell like we were close. But as as time went on, I could tell that we were just getting closer and closer every week. So. Any more questions? Really? Mm -hmm. uh, having that crowd, the Mudbucks crowd, uh, how does that help you as a focus more? Yeah, I, it helps out a lot. I mean, after I make a save, they cheer, they celebrate. And even my, like my first game here when, they, when we scored that first goal and I heard the crowd erupt, like it was, it was a great feeling. And it, it, all, it makes, makes me kind of want, want us to win for the fans too because like they're there, they're supporting us, they're helping us out. So I think it's a big deal with the fans here, for sure. How do you keep your emotions in check during a you know, pretty tight playoff run, being a you know, young man yourself? 
mm -hmm. your motion to check the playoffs? Honestly, I just don't get too high, don't get too low. If if they scored, it happens. You know, that's just go through my head. Like they're gonna score, you're gonna save some, you're not. So it's just quickly forget about it, act like it doesn't happen, zero zero game. So that's what goes through my head for sure. Pretty yeah. rough start to the season for the Sox. Are you ready to come over to the north side yet? Nope. Always gonna be a south side guy. Always gonna be a south side guy. I gotta have fans too. Yep, yep. So any more questions for Nicole? Thanks, Gary. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. We would honor a player portion of today's uh, Mudbugs Media Lunch, and he was the hero in game two. Uh, he scored with just a little over a minute in overtime to help the Mudbugs even the series with the Brahmas. Mudbugs centerman, Jaden Goldie. I mean, nothing special. I got a really good support group with my family and friends, and obviously you get the text from your mom and your dad and some of my, my buddies from back home. But, I mean, nothing special, but it, it's always a nice feeling when people reach out. You, know, you have two top ten goalies uh, from Lone Star regular season and in the postseason as well. Um, what makes those guys so, so tough to score against? They're big. First and foremost, they're big, and they're both a little bit different. Graham's a little bit bigger, and Smith's a little bit uh, – more like kind of skinny up top, but they both move really well for big guys and are really sound positionally. So they're tough to score on, and obviously with two low, low scoring games, you kind of see that. How hard was it to not get two down after Friday night after being so close going four overtime? No matter what it's like, still down over one. No yeah. How many and honestly, it wasn't too bad. I think um, you don't really have time to think about it. By the time the game ended, it was like 1.30, and you're like, all right, well, we got to do this again in like 12 hours, or not 12 hours, like. 17, 18 hours. 16. Thanks, Chet. Math guy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, honestly, that was just kind of the nice thing. Honestly, you go back and play the next day. Obviously, it's a bit of a grind on your body, but I think mentally it helped us a little bit that we weren't able to just, like, sit around for a day and think about how much it, it sucked. We were just able to get back on the horse and win the next one. How do you think as a group is, you know, 18 to 20-year-olds to just stay together not let this get too much of um, I mean, it's not easy all the time. I mean... Uh, obviously, that was a tough loss, but I think we're just a really close team, and we all just believe in each other first and foremost. I think that's the most important thing. We Honestly, I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind that we were going to come out and give it everything we had and have a good chance to win, and obviously it worked out that way. So, uh, Coach Hill is famous for his heat charge with, with, with goalies, where you can beat them, where they're stronger. Yeah. When you made that move around the guy just inside the blue line, and, and you had a clear path. Is that a spot that you were thinking, <laughs> or did you just see it? Uh, that, that might not have been on the scouting report, high glove, but I mean, I don't want to give away too many secrets about the, the heat charts, obviously. I mean, Hilly does a great job with the, the goalie pre-scouts, but I think we'll keep those to ourselves. How much are you looking forward to what this place is going to be like on Friday night and Saturday? Really looking forward to it. The fans are a huge part of what makes it so special to play here. I think everyone will say that, and the atmosphere is awesome, and I think everyone just wants to be the guy to make a big hit or score a big goal, get the crowd going. So we're all really excited. You've been playing hockey for a while, obviously. What makes this team so special? Um, well, as far as the team's concerned, this is definitely one of the most close teams I've been on. Like Nico was saying earlier, I mean, just everyone gets along so well. There's obviously on different teams, you have different kind of cliques of guys in the past. But, I mean, this year, honestly, it's just like we're one big family. I know it sounds cliche, but... We, we really are. We, everyone gets along so well. Everyone's friends with everyone. Doesn't mind hanging out with this person, that person. And, yeah. I know you guys stop at Bucky's pretty much every time you come back from there. Yeah. Are you a big Bucky's guy? Did you celebrate the same way you always do, buying the same stuff on the way back? I mean, soup usually gives me some trouble for it. But I go in there, I get some sour cherry blasters after every uh, <laughs> most trips. But, I mean, he usually gives me, like, a dirty look when I grab them. But they were sold out this time. I was kind of upset. They were sold out. They were sold out. They took them all off the shelf. I was choked, but it was. Uh, was there a reply? What's your replacement then? Just decided to eat healthy this time. Grabbed a body armor, got out of there. Probably for the best. Have you thought about naming your goal that won the game on Saturday? Naming it the Sour Cherry Blaster? <laughs> like giving it a title? I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'll give it a title. I'm just happy it went in. And I also got a question. Chet's getting, you know, he's, he's trying to participate in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> what do you give him for the effort, at least 
I give him an A for effort. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I appreciate him trying to get in the mix. It's uh, just trying to be a part of the team. He is part of the team. You know, we love to have him. Love to have him rocking the muzzy. So, great work, Chet. Way to go. That's a tough one. Um, I'll go. I'll go with Hero. His is so bad, it's good. <laughs> Coach Sumi said that uh, it didn't take him until today or Monday or whatever to get the point across about cleaning up the line changes. And he said, ask you, how did he get his point across? Uh, I mean, Soup doesn't usually get too mad, so it's not too bad. But it was definitely addressed on the bench to clean it up a little bit. And it was addressed this morning in video. But it wasn't anything crazy. It was more just like, we got to figure this out. It wasn't too bad. Any more questions for Jake? Thanks, Jake. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks. Our Bucks fans, once again, we hope you guys tune in this Friday and come out to George's Pond and Hirsch Coliseum. Game three, be sure to be one of the first 800 fans in the building. Get your rally towels. Give us a call. Lock up your tickets at 318-636-7094 or by logging on to mudbuckshockey.com. Till next time, Plaza.